coming up. The first time my first rape was by gunpoint, you know? But what? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was a virgin then, you know what I'm saying? Didn't know oh anything my about God. I just wow. went down, chained me with chains, lock it with a padlock, put my hands behind me and chain it to a post and just have me there out many hours, just, you what? know, beat you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey everyone, so this week on the Trailblazers, it is a must watch as we bring you part one of our interview with Minister Marion Hall, formerly Queen of the Dancer, Lady Sa. Stay tuned. To our partners, the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, Kingston's preferred choice. Stars publicity for all your public relations and publicity needs. Get noticed and align with the stars. DG's Health and Wellness Center, operated by certified nutritionist and health columnist Donovan Grant. Contact them today for all your weight loss and other nutritional needs. And Care is Beauty, for all your skincare goals and more. Get 5% off each purchase from them using the discount code tomorrow 5 off Learn more details on all these partners as well as links to their website by visiting the description box on the Trailblazers with Tamara McHale YouTube channel. What's your word to them? I would say to fight. Fight for your dreams. Fight for your purpose. The life that inspires you. That motive that you aspire to be. Right. Uh, in my humble opinion, is become very comfortable with yourself. Very important. You know, the saying in Jamaica, one hand can't clap. You forgive yourself for allowing people to mistreat you. Disciplines that we need to embody. You just have to work at it and be committed to everyone. And, and scary to have all of that fall away from you. And you have to celebrate those wins. Work with right. fitness clients. For guidance, rely on Christ for support. And no rush. I did it. I, I made my move into entrepreneurship at 40. Um, so chicken, so scared. That when what, you know, last comments would you want to share with you? You have your core values. You do the right things. It'll fall in place for you. Minister Marion Hall, formerly known by the stage name Lady Saw, is no doubt Jamaica's original general queen of the dance hall and is the first female DJ to be certified as a triple platinum and Grammy award winning artist. Yet some years ago in 2015, she made an unlikely move and decided to be baptized, walking away from the fame and fortune that had her dominating the music industry for over two decades. This week, we hear part one of her personal life story from childhood to becoming the musical legend and warrior she is today. Hi, Minister Marion. It is a pleasure to finally have you on the Trailblazers. Honestly, this is like such a great opportunity to have you with me. And trust me, a lot of people are tuning in because we are just excited to really hear your story and hear it from you because others have said your story but from hearing it from you means the world so thanks bless for joining bless god i bless god for you i bless god that we are able to sit in his presence and talk about him for the glory of god it's not about me it's not about you and i i was to test the spirit first before i even took on the interview because i haven't been speaking to anyone for a while now because if it does not glorify god i don't want to be a part of it so i bless god for you and i pray that his spirit will take over and do damage to the kingdom of darkness and bring some souls out of darkness into his marvelous okay. light bless wow. god Thank you so much. And um, as I mentioned, you are an icon, an inspiration all across the world, not only in Jamaica. And your journey, in, you know, in terms of dancehall and then moving into gospel is really the stuff that movies are made of. So tell me about yourself, about your early beginnings, because I understand that you really got your start in the music industry quite early. But how did you grow up? I grew up in Galena, St. Mary, three miles away from Port Maria, which is the capital of St. Mary. I, we grew up poor. Yeah, my dad was a fisherman. He was a farmer. He was a painter. He was jack of all trades and he did master all of them. I remember him leaving for America for us to have a better life. But my dad 
he was unable to read. So that enders him, I believe. He also was a very abusive, very stern, and I mean, physically abusive to mom and all of us. Uh, but I understood him like from a young age, I, I saw where I realized that something was not right. So, you know, when I grew up, I finally understood completely that he didn't grow up with a loving family. You know, his mom, she was loving enough because she was loving to me. And there was a, his mom, father, wife was also a prophetess and she was the one who bring him to church and all of this. But because he was unable to read and he didn't grow up with that love, he didn't know how to express it to us. He recently passed, you know, we laid him to rest a few days ago. Oh, and um, I was, yes, and I was able to, you know, tell off all this, but we grew up hard and poor, but God gave me a heart of love. You know, my, it's, it's, I can't explain it, but I fall in love easily and the heart get broken easily, but I'm still standing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though. Trust me, yeah. I understand that. I'm a softy at heart as well. So I, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so you grew up in that situation. And again, my condolences. I did hear of your dad's passing. It was yeah. in the media. I think I actually even mentioned it in a news report. And yeah, um, yeah so my condolences to you and your family regarding that so yes yeah, so at what age did you realize you had this singing talent and discovered that yeah. gift okay so my dad also was he loved singing like that was obvious like he just kept singing singing every day and he when he went to farm work in america he would come back with a big tip a tip like a recording tip yes like with cassette on all of that and he would press on it and singing all kind of, oh, I got a bigger woman. I got a bigger woman. I got a bigger woman. And I don't know what to do. Pop, pop, pop. And he's like, I'm going to pack my grip. I'm going to pack my grip. I'm going to pack my grip. And down the road I go. But I can't, I never heard that song when I grew up from anywhere else. And I'm wondering, was that an original or... Because I never hear anybody with that song, but we always thought, like, who is he talking? Because, you okay. know, he was always attacking my mother. So I'm like, who is he talking? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he was a singer. Uh, he loved to sing. I mean, wasn't famous or anything. And there was a lot of churches in Galena, St. Mary. And uh, we used to go to church. Also, his uh, grandfather... His, his grandfather wife, she also was, she was crippled because she said, they call her one a woman, but we know, you know, it's a prophetess she was. Yes. And whatever she prophesied, that was how it was. But she was a crippled woman laying in bed looking. She had the glow of Christ upon her, just stunningly beautiful. I said, I said, Hi, Linda, how is it you, you are crippled? And she said, God sent her out on a mission to go and warn a man um, by this place called Mason Hall. And she said, she wasn't, I'm not going. She was washing and she said she was all wet. And she said she, she wasn't going. Like she disobeyed God then. And she fell under the, the line where she was hanging up the clothes. And from that day, she was crippled and blind. But wow. she was still speaking to God, still hearing from God. And I didn't understand it until I started reading the word of God. But we grew up, I grew up like a tomboy. I could go crab bush and catch crab. And when the crab bites you, my brother Elvis said, bite him back. You know, so you should bite me. You put your hand in the crab hole and it bite you. You bite back the crab and the crab will let you go. You know, let go of your hand. I also could have made, I made like grooms. Yeah. And I would sell, go to the craft market in Ocherius and I would, I trim my hair low or wear town and I just to hide that I was a girl and I would be all over the craft market, broom me, broom me, buy a broom to sweep the room, make it look like a room. You know, oh, I, was, you know I was a girl yeah. until I started busting boots. Yes. So my lady said, come here, you're a little girl. I say, no. She said, you're a little girl. I, I said, no, I'm a boy, you know, because I hide under there. Yeah. And she called up everybody like, Miss Macy, come here. Miss Dasa, come here. You know the little girl? That little, why is a little girl? But that was what I did 
to not draw attention to me, okay. you know? So I would dress like a boy, cut the pants off and all of that, just to, you know, hide myself under there. And we, I could climb the tallest coconut tree. I'll be up in the roof, kicking out the coconuts. And, I, and we climb guinea tree and we know how to tie it because our dad showed us how to tie it with a rope and slowly let it down when you chop it with the guinea. So yes. It wouldn't crack. Yeah, so I know all of that. We build carts and we drive the carts. And I used to dream about becoming famous and driving my own car and picking wow. up friends and all of that. But I knew I was a singer from then in church because I used to, my dad took us all and baptized us in a Seventh-day Adventist church in a rock vessel. Really? And yeah, wow. but by by the next week, my dad was a backslider because he started cussing. He couldn't control himself, just cussing. And um, anyway, I would go up and sing. And I remember one Saturday they called Sister Hall. Could be, um, they said you would, um, Sister Hall will be the last item on the program. I thought they were saying I was the. It was the last time they're gonna allow me to sing, so I didn't go up. I didn't get it right and I didn't go up there and say, oh, we're going to tell your dad when when, when you, you we go to Galena. And I was so nervous, trembling, because my dad don't play. My dad don't beat me like a normal child. Wow. My dad would chain me with chains, lock it with a padlock, put my hands behind me and chain it to a post and just have me there how many hours, just, you what? know, beat you. Yeah, sometimes you would tie me with a big rope and you would throw the rope over a big almond tree. You People would say almond, almond tree, and he would tie it and he would beat me with the electric card. He would beat me with the thing that the coconut, the, we call it coconut broom, that the coconut grow yeah. on. And I would get all kind of cuts all over and he would rest, he would eat his, his food and come back. He would take a shower, he would come back. But I remember when he tied me with a rope, I left from how oh, I become an artist, right? And now I'm telling yeah, you the whole no, story. But, that no, you, you can go, continue that. We can pick this that part. In the movie. This is a movie thing. Yeah, okay. we can yeah, pick that up. Real dog. I remember, you know, but anyway, it was a lot. But I wanted to be a, a singer because people were telling me, oh, you can sing. You know, I remember them going to my dad and say, your daughter can sing. And say, sing what? You need to just sit, go sit somewhere or find somewhere dead. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my gosh. I, I tried not to talk about these. I, I, I was writing a book and I said, I wouldn't do it until my dad passed. Because I believe that even though he was so, you know, yes. aggressive to us, I think it would break his heart. So I left it. But I knew I was, I had this talent from a very young age. I would go to the shop. When he sent me to send me to buy anything and I would sing songs, just make them up. And I could remember next week and the week after, you know, that was how these songs would stay in, in me. And I'm like, you know, yes. So that was why I said I wanted wow. to Wow. All right. So minister. So, I mean, that part of your story though, because really and truly what you just described, as you mentioned, your dad in some ways was very abusive. So and having that experience of even those severe beatings, how did the trauma of that affect you? And then despite that, how did that even continue to push you forward into a singing career, despite knowing your dad had those sentiments? All right. When, when seeing my dad in action, like, like abusing me was... It was, I, I, I didn't even know it was abuse. <laughs> you know, it was just normal for us, all of us, um, all my, my sisters and my brothers, but I get it a whole lot. I don't know. I, I, I believe because I, I was a tomboy, as I said, I never stayed in the yard. I was always looking, seeking for something um, to do with, you know, getting, living a better life. And, and don't get me wrong, my dad, he wanted a better life for me because he gave me away when I was a, like a, maybe 10 years old, 11 years old or 12. He gave me away to a pastor and his wife. She was a nurse and he gave me away because he wanted me to, you know, become, yeah, maybe more educated or because they, they were, um, they also... Their son was going to a, 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 a high school, and this high school was a good high school. And uh, I guess he wanted me to, you know, have a better life. But one of us, even one, 
So you see, my dad had good intention also. Yeah. Um, but I cried to come home because I was very close to my youngest brother. Two of them really, because I end up taking them after my mom. My mom was always running away from my dad. And I end up, you know, taking those two. And at the age of maybe 16, 15, 16, I, I, I built a one bedroom on a capture land, like capture land, you know, and, and, and I, we grew, I, I just, I mothered them. But what drew me, what pushed me, all that abuse though, pushed me towards becoming somebody because what the main thing was because the main reason for this drive was because I saw my mom, he was very abusive to her, beat her a lot, and she had never argued. My mom was never a person who argues and fights. You ain't never hear my mother arguing with anybody in the community or anybody for that matter. And he just constantly beat that woman. And she was small in frame. One day she fought back and the whole community was like, come here, quick, come, come, come. Jenny, I'll be key to over there. Her name is Jasmine White, but they call her Jenny. Jenny. She passed away too, you know, and I'm saying, Jenny, I'll be key. Like the whole neighborhood was just rejoicing that my mom was finally I standing know. up for herself. Oh, and when my dad was trying to push her out the door, like she was, she stood like this and he got a broomstick and she broke it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finally, like, finally then she st- I didn't even know that she could stand up for herself yeah. but this drove me to be somebody I was I wanted to be somebody you know I didn't want to be just walking about you know it, you know not with no direction so I, I realized I could sing so I would walk up and down and I would sing I was also a dancer like there was a sound system that a man who owned next door named Leeton. His name is Salita. Mm-hmm. I, I have natural red hair. You know, my hair always was red. I have this brown, orange look here. Yeah. And as soon as he turned on the sound system, I start whining. I would yes. whine till they call me whiny, whiny. You know, and I remember one day my mom, she she threw a stone in the bush because we were in the bush just doing all kind of crazy. And she threw a stone and it burst my head. Oh no. And my mom was like, my mom almost died. Like she grabbed me so fast. She started watching over her head. But you know, because she didn't mean to. Yeah. And I knew what she's doing. And so, because she nervous, my, my dad gonna kill her now. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. And I was just like, praying. You know, it's all right, mama. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I would whine so much. And that day when I, when the stone bust my head, like the man passed the uh on the stone and said, whiny, whiny. Your body full of swiney, swiney. Like, you know, <laughs> like, like, like he taught, I don't know what he was rhyming, but he was laughing at me thinking I got a, a whooping, you know? Yeah. But that drove me because of my mom suffering so much abuse. I wanted to, you know, be somebody to take her out of that. Not just the abuse, but there was a time when we end up in Kingston and we were in the ghettos of Maxfield Avenue. Maxfield Avenue and I remember her washing clothes for people and she would come back and say I washed like two barrels of clothes today and I didn't they didn't even give me lunch and you know yeah and I wanted to relax my hair and I was crying because I want my hair to be relaxed you know I'm I'm here cream them have Jeffrey cream that burned so hard and she tried to like the the cream but, but she gave me her only payment that she got from you know, washing that day and my hair, when it was done, it was in my back just, and I just running around in the ghetto like, um, you know, wow. <laughs> I always remember that, you know, and, um, but that drove me to be an artist because people was always saying I was good. When I went to Orokopes, the secondary school, my interest was just to sing, 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 and sing, sing, sing. I remember going into music class and like the, the lady said, find the, like she would say, the A, A string or A whatever on the guitar. I can't remember. And I, I just took the guitar like this. And, she, <laughs> and I go like this. Wow. She, gave, she said, get out. She said, get out. She wouldn't even know what she did because I so wanted to be, you know, able to play the guitar and stuff but I didn't know what to, I just go bing, and she said get out of my class and I never played <laughs> wow so let me just 
continue because, wow, I mean, even from an early age, you were already going through quite a lot. And then obviously that experience with your mom, dealing with your dad, and then of course, working, um, living at one point in the ghetto and then working Ooh. for others and doing domestic work. Yeah. So the worst how- part was the ghetto. The worst part is the ghetto where you have some men who they don't allow girls to go. So we get raped in the ghetto. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. You from, you from, you went from, you step in that. I remember the first day I went to Maxfield Avenue, there was this, this man, like we, we were kicking ball and I like to, you know, do what my brothers did. And it went over some zinc fence in a yard. And I went over there to, to get it. And this, Man who was older than me, he grabbed on to me and he said, is this Jenny daughter Browning, your pretty man, you know? And I, what his intention were was, you know? So I started screaming and ran out, but that was my first, you know? Yeah, I, I realized what it was about right there. And boy, a lot of, right now we're speaking, just know a lot of young girls, they are being raped as we speak in the ghettos and there's good people in the ghetto but there's a lot of bad and for me I didn't when you have someone who is your father is known and you're this and your bad brother and you you know your, your brother can defend you your sister you know what I'm saying then nobody touch you but I was just a country girl because when I first came in they, this girl want to fight and I beat her and everybody with her you know wow. so they like oh my god she you know but the first time my first rape was by gunpoint, you know? But what? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was a virgin dead. You know what I'm saying? Didn't know oh anything my God. about I just Yeah, so all that all that comes, it's a package, you know what I'm saying? So and that one was that one was somebody I speak to. I even respect this person and thought he was, you know, a respectable person in the community, you know, and automatically you become his girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even though that was not your choice, you know? So all of that happened, but that was really why I had was to get out, you yeah. know? And uh, I think my dad was abroad by then. Or uh, if sometimes I would go from Kingston to, yeah. And I remember I went, uh, I followed a friend to her. I was waiting on her by her boyfriend house. Mm-hmm. And she came, she and him, and she told me this guy that liked me, you know, called me down the road, but I didn't want to go. And she insists, you know, she keep insisting. And I said, maybe she wants some privacy or something. So I went down there to, you know, so what's up? It was a setup, another rape, you know what I'm saying? So that's how it is. So I, I said, I have to get out of this place. So I started going to anywhere the sound systems were. I end up at New Name Music where... Uh, Castro Brown was, you know, I uh, met, uh, I met Diamond Rush Sample Lou. He came down from America and, you know, he started saying, oh, he got a, a cassette with me and, you know, how good I was. And, you know, he was interested in me, like, you know, like chill every day, you know, but in the long run, we developed, you know, a relationship. Did not even know he got somebody else in, in uh, Mr. Canada until this lady popped up and said she was with him in Canada. I'm like, okay. So I left uh, after, you know, but it has, the thing with me, a lot of women don't talk about these things and not just women, men too, Mm -hmm. because when I first got saved and the Lord told me, I was writing a song, I had Jesus, the Lord told me, don't make it just about you, make it about women who has been raped, beaten, battered, forced into prostitution, women who were supposed to be dead women like yourself, but they're standing today because of my grace. Yeah. And that's how I wrote, I've been beaten, I've been raped. And when that song came out, I was surprised that men was calling me. They've been abused by family members. And a lot, they didn't go back, they go into, you know, they believe that once they've been raped by a man, they just go all in and say, they, there's no turning back. You know, and even that they keep coming to me, you know, for priors and I, you know, so I even wow. got one, he went and got baptized and he got the Holy Ghost. Wow. Yes, I said, go, but go I mean, he, that's, that's amazing. And I mean, 
you are definitely helping other women and men to overcome and to heal from you sharing yeah. your your story and being yeah. so authentic because i recently even um heard uh donny mcclerking that famed american gospel mm -hmm. singer sharing how he too was raped when he was young by his grandfather yeah. A lot of boys. And I mean, yes, so so you are indeed right. All right, but um, so dealing with the trauma of that, not only drove me once, but tw more than once. Yes, even at one point, at one point, how were you then able to still have that determined spirit that you know, as a young woman, you wanted to make it in this very competitive dance um industry. Music was all I know. I, 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 that's, I could make songs just, just like that. Just like that. Oh, I'm, mm, 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 mm. I've been sitting here and I've been wandering away and I'm, you know what? And I'm, and people are like, oh my God. I started working at the free zone and as a young girl and every afternoon I would sing and the security guard would be like, go down under the tree because they'll fire you. I said, you know something? I don't even belong here. I'm a singer. I'm an artist. And I'm going to be big someday. I'm going to leave here. Because this, I didn't cut out for this. So I left. And I went straight to the studio. I met some reducers instead of producers, you know. But anyway, as I said, I was just, music was all I know. And I had was to come out of the ghetto. My sister was 15 years old when she gave birth to my niece. Wow. And that was not her will. So read between the lines. She's yeah. telling her story another time. Yeah. Um, then that niece is a doctor now anyway, a doctor in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. And when she was a baby, her daddy didn't want her, her daddy. And now daddy hunting her down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we had was to sacrifice because we used to feed her with just sugar and water. We call that sugar and water. Yeah. And this girl, you know, she, she and my daughter, because I adopted a child after, because this child reminded me of myself also, only to find out she got a story, you know? Um, and she never told me her story until they got scholarships in Jamaica, went to Nashville. She wrote me a letter, like six pages. I say, you are my guardian angel. Wow. She regarded me as her mom and not her mom as her mom. Wow. Because there was so much cruelty. But I can tell you, when you determine to be somebody, but the only thing was, the twist to this was, when I came singing, nobody was listening to any, Mama, don't worry. Easy, yes. just chill. I'm working harder to buy you a house on the hill. Papa, just, eat, you know, yeah. they weren't listening for, they want raw. Crunchy. I remember yeah. the guys were coming out doing all kind of derogatory music, sexual music, but not to uplift any woman, just to tell them, girl, you're this, and you're that, and you're that. So I flipped it. Yes. Though it was about sex, it was like me being, they yeah. said, oh my God, we, you say things we didn't, we want to say, but you know, so. Yes. I don't know what happened. It took off. And that was not the plan because I was singing, give me a reason. And, you know, I, I flipped back to give me a reason because I was doing Mama Don't Worry and them songs they didn't want to hear. Yeah, they, they and wanted one, the, the raunchy and the raw. Yes. So I remember when I did one X-rated song, I was at Stone Love. Nobody knew who I was. But this song keep getting pull up, you know, rewind. And they were just busting a lot of clappers because it was Christmas time. And I'm standing in the middle of the dance hall and nobody knew who I was. <laughs> I was in the most beautiful dress. But all those years, something in me knew I belonged to Jesus. All you see me up there, if you see me, no matter what you see me doing, I always put on my, I have a lot of underclothes. Because I didn't want to expose nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I have on my panties, my shorts, my, you know, that all kind of <laughs> And But each time I do what I did, I would go by the bedside and pray. Yeah. And I beg God to forgive me. Lord Jesus, forgive me, God. I'm going to give my turn my life around. I'm going to give my life to you. I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve you, Lord. And I couldn't keep those promises. 
Yes. But somehow I knew what I was doing was not the right way to use this talent that God had blessed me with. But I mean, Lord. and and that you're you're indeed right. That was your view. But at the same time, no doubt it really propelled you to great heights because obviously we all know you are regarded mm -hmm. as the queen of the dance hall. Well, formally now, but you uh, I stepped and, away. And that's stepped exactly, away. and that's because you stepped away. Mm -hmm. So that was not even a title that really just went. You decided to step yeah. away from yeah. that. Yeah, they did crown me the queen of dance hall and. I tell you, I tell you, that comes with the, that comes with a lot of attacks. And you know what? I'm I'm so happy that I was attacked, actually, you know, because I believe it was what was happening. I was at a dark place, and the devil had me as one of his general. And there was someone who wanted that spot so much that the devil just pushed and said, go fight, kill. You know, kill, if, if you have to kill, kill. Because there was a point when all the lies was coming in and people was just telling lies on me. There was a point where I'm like, this, yeah, yeah, they want me to take out my court loss. Mm -hmm. I'm just that, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, that's what the devil was pushing me. I was like, I'm going to run up in our studio and I'm going to start, you know. Yeah. These people think I'm just, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to. You know, and I start thinking about when I was in the ghetto, what, you know, used to happen and, you know, oh, I, and I'm like, I'm going to, and God said, mm -mm. yeah, I remember, whoo, oh my, abushanta, abushaya, abushantia, God, I bless you. Mande keteya, abushante keteya, thank you, Jesus, holy, makutandai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for his grace and mercy. I thank God that I, even though he was calling me from a long time, I thank him for the ones who rose up against me because sometimes God will put you in an uncomfortable position, yeah? Or an uncomfortable situation so it can move you to a more comfortable position because if it wasn't for my enemies, my friends who became my enemies, I shot a cat. And I, I wouldn't have gone to God. I would have forgot that I had a katanda, two knees at the time to fall on. These same knees, I didn't know the purpose of these knees was to bow in the presence of God because of the name that is above all name was the name that I called upon. When I heard him answer, and I heard him, the first time was in the bath. I stripped off my clothes and I went in to take a bath. And at the time, there was a woman in my house who became my enemy. And I said, I said, Why, Lord? Why is it that my friends become my foes? Why the man that I live with disgrace me like this? And I heard the voice of the Lord say, it's not over. It's certainly not over. Tune in next week, Sunday, October 17 at 6 p.m. JA, right here on this YouTube channel, The Trailblazers with Tamar McHale TV show for part two of this awe-inspiring story with Minister Marion Hall, formerly Queen of the Dance Hall, Lady Saw. Hey everyone, I am Tamar McHale, television and radio presenter, producer and communication specialist, and of course producer and host of the Trailblazer series. I'm inviting you to join the family. Yes, you. All you have to do is just click that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you are alerted as to when we have new episodes. And then join our family for weekly inspirational episodes that will not only lift your spirits, but will give you the tools, the keys, and the strategies that you need so that you can blaze your trail.